Hey guys, it's Ross, and we're in the greenhouse, and it's also November 1st, and I I thought November 1st, by now, I probably would be getting very many figs, which I'm not, but I wouldn't also be getting very tasty figs, and I think that's about to be unproven. This one here we have in the greenhouse, this is called as Mir, and that's the fig I want to show you guys today. But I also had a Sweet Joy fig from Bass. My tree finally put out a fig and um, I actually ripened it outside the greenhouse and it was unbelievably good. It tasted like a marshmallow. That's no exaggeration. It really did taste quite similar to a marshmallow. This one here is this mirror though and we've had it in the greenhouse for, I don't know, it's, it's taken quite some time because the temperatures have really cooled down we've had this thing hanging here for probably two weeks um, but I've only had it in the greenhouse for maybe a week and a half something like that and this fig has been leaking honey I didn't really realize that uh, but I took a whole glob of honey off at the bottom of this thing you can kind of see that in there see that glistening in there so I want to take this off Oh, didn't get the stem, but that's all right. Let me fix the brightness here for you guys. I don't know why it's not working, but here is the fig. Tons of honey at the eye, and you can see how red this is in here. Try one more time. There we go. So there it is. Uh, this one comes from Bulgaria and there's a grower there named Kirill Donov. Let me put you guys down and talk about this fig. Kirill Donov is a pretty big nurseryman in uh, Bulgaria and he's growing all kinds of strange things in Zone 8 where he lives in Bulgaria. Um, the man seems to really know what he's doing and he found some interesting ones that he sells in his nursery there. So if you live in Europe, you can probably get this this fig for like really cheap. If you live in the United States, it's going to be very difficult to get this as we're just now getting it into most people's hands. Well, it's just now getting into few people's hands. I'm lucky enough to have this one. And I, I thought this would be so tasty, this fig, that I've actually decided to... Um, to graft this to multiple trees and actually have multiple trees of this. Let me cut this open for you guys. Uh, because I believe it's going to be that good. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Um, it does sort of remind me though of like a green Aishia, at least in, in looks, but the neck is quite strange. Um, the neck shouldn't be as prominent as it is, I guess. It's kind of like, almost like a cold de dom neck. It seems a bit elongated as well for a green Ashia. It looks very thick and it looks very jammy. Um, this is well ripened. You know, this is probably going to be a really tasty fig. And this is the first fig off of this tree. Um, you know, I've grafted numerous trees of this. This is one that I got from my friend Steven, aka Fruit Nut on eBay. And this tree really isn't all that tall. You know, he grafted it actually himself, the cleft graft. We did a trade this year and uh, the thing grew pretty decently, but it also had a fig on it. So I take you guys outside the greenhouse, go on a little walk, I can show you guys two of my other Izmir trees. One that I grafted, two that I grafted myself. Um, I got cuttings this year from a friend this past winter, and I also got the plant uh, grafted from my friend Steven, like I said. Um, let's see. Where are you, Izmir? Well, I'm not really entirely sure where it is in this pile of trees, but there is one right here 
that I know for sure is it. And you can see on this tree, this is raspberry latte we grafted them to. Uh, this is Mega Celeste on the left, and you can see how vigorous this is. They grew probably, I mean, Mega Celeste put on probably, you know, three feet of growth plus another two and a half feet of growth. Izmir only put out one limb. You can see the, the graft here. We have them staked up. We also have them tied pretty close together. And um, this one probably grew easily four feet. And that's what it is. And I've, I've pinched it to see if I can get some fruits. Uh, but, you know, no dice. Couldn't get them in time. It is what it is. You know, it's they're young, right? So you can't always get fruit off of very young trees. But we got one here that I'm super excited to eat. Um, I don't really know too, too much about this fig, but I guess we can talk about it as I as I eat this. Boy oh boy does that look good. Wow. That's really good. Kind of reminds me of a Col de Don Blanc, to be honest with you. Very jammy, quite sweet. The berry flavor is complex and it has a nice little bite to it. Some sharpness in there, some acidity. Um, this is a hell of a fig. Man, I'm a huge fan of this fig now. Um, now, like I said, I don't know too, too much about this fig other than where it came from who grows it, but it seems like there has been reports of this being more of a mid-season, mid to late season variety. It's not super late, so something like Col de Don Blanc, which is very late, this may be a nice alternative to Col de Don Blanc. Um, for me, this is, this is a 9 out of 10. This actually is really good, and it's November 1st. I, can't, I honestly cannot believe it. This is really good. Very thick jam, extremely thick. That's raspberry, it's like a raspberry jam that's extremely thick and very sweet. It's absolutely a winner. I cannot, I just, <laughs> I really love this fig. Um, I really just love figs like that, have a similar description to that. Let me show you guys the leaf pattern so you know what you're dealing with here. Quite strange, right? Look at that. And this is quite vigorous, so the leaf pattern will change quite a bit if your tree is a less vigorous, but you can see how interesting the leaf pattern gets on a more vigorous shoot here. Um, you know, this is what it looks like when it's less vigorous, probably. And as you go up, it starts to get, you know, see this is less vigorous and then it starts to get like this as it gets more vigor. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool guys. I'm really loving that fig. And again, I said it's a nine out of 10. Um, there's very few nine out of 10s that I've given this year. And that's right up there with the Col de Don Blanc. Um, I hope it's a bit earlier. You know, I don't know the cold hardiness. Uh, I don't know the rain resistance. I don't know really much about it. So thank you for joining me on this little tasting here. This is actually my sweet joy tree that we talked about in the beginning of the video. This is another fig that I got to eat today. That was really, really good. And we've had a you know some dry weather here and I think that's why we've been able to you got two figs left on this tree but they're not ready so hopefully the rain tomorrow doesn't ruin what's left of my fig season and the frost stays away for another week or two all right guys take care and i'll talk to you all soon